All right, so I'm gonna make an update video on what we spend running the pellet stove. We've had a few people ask questions about it, how fish is it? You know, considering putting it in there. So I'll give you an idea. I just got back a minute ago from the co-op, grabbed 10 more bags. We got some snow and some temperatures down towards zero coming this week. So right about Thanksgiving. I don't even mind it. I mean, with the pellet stove, it's really not a big deal. So I just store them right here. Made a little makeshift area with the uh, some wood to keep it up off the ground. I should put a freaking uh, tarp over it, but I'd have to dig it out. I'm just not feeling that energetic right now. So anyways, also got the propane tanks refilled. It's literally been probably a month and a half. All the, we use these for is cooking with. I think that's it. Yeah, just cooking with for the most part. So they've been like, oh, the other thing about the wood stove, the one con about it is it doesn't really have a thermostat. It's either on or it's off. So at nighttime, it's a pain in the ass because you'll wake up, it'll be 80 degrees. At night, I like to turn the pellet stove off unless it's like zero degrees outside because it, I don't want to wake up to 80 degrees. I like sleeping 60, 65 degrees. So at night, we'll set the propane furnace and let it kind of regulate the temperatures inside the house. So we do use it sometimes at nighttime, help keep temperatures normal. But you know, when it's only 40, 50 degrees out, I just turn the pellet stove off at about nine o'clock make sure it's not on no more make sure we're about 75 degrees at nine o'clock and by morning we're at 60 so it's perfect and then i it does have a timer where it automatically kicks on about 5 a.m so that's pretty sweet anyways let me get these bags out and we'll talk about the pellet stove road. no telling where it goes driving through days and nights won't stop for traffic lights Searching for my highs. You can say I lost my mind. It's 40 pound tanks. I don't know how they weigh them because even if the sky is still heavier than 40 pounds. Uh, I also got these little gauges here that look pretty good. Give me an idea if we're running low on propane or not. I got the electric ones, the Wi-Fi ones. Jumping from cliffs so high, trusting our wings to fly. Sometimes we're crashing down, but we get up and start from the ground. And I. Here we go, show me. Did we go on that? Get your ass over here, Rocky. Now, let me figure out where the road goes. Even if I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs. You can say I lost my mind. I will That's one of the most annoying things. This thing gets just disgusting looking after a day of running, but it comes clean super easy. So anyway, so we're at level one. We don't hardly ever bring it up above one, sometimes to two if we just need to hurry up and heat the house up if we had it off for a while, but we've only been at level one off and on during the day today. And today, let's see, like right now it's 8.30 at night. You can see here we're 19 degrees outside. We hit a low of seven degrees. We've hit a high of 30 degrees. Um, I do have, my little fans on they're at about that level there so about 30 percent pumping underneath the house and where the pipes are it's 55 degrees inside the rv it's 73 right now and that's just loving running it at one and like i said it's 19 degrees fahrenheit outside so anyways 55 degrees underneath the house 46 and 44 that's the front and rear tanks basically that's the uh galley tank and that's the freshwater tank. I got little sensors on. And underneath the RV, it is currently 39 degrees. And we got no heaters under the RV or nothing. The only heat it's getting is what's radiating, radiating off the RV or what's coming from little uh, fan heaters underneath the stairs there. Some of that, the heat it's sucking in here, going underneath the RV is probably going underneath and getting trapped in with my awesome skirting that I have down there. So, 
That's a little bit of review how the pellet stove's working. I don't think we've ever gone through more in one bag a day. We pay about $5.99 a bag. Right now, when it if the weather's between, say, 30s and 40s, one bag can last two to three days. If it's like this in the 10 to 20 range, probably hitting close to a bag a day. Even if it was 20 below, we wouldn't go over a bag a day. One bag a day seems to keep the RV at that perfect temperature, you know, once you get down below 20 degrees or so. So yeah, I hope that helps if you're interested in these pellet stoves. We love ours, it's given us independence to know that we can pretty much take whatever the weather's gonna throw at us. And we always have the furnace as backup. I like to keep those furnace tank, or those propane tanks full. So we always have them as backups. You know, it is expensive and I wouldn't recommend it if you live in temperatures that are 30 to 40s as much. It's more for when you're going lower than that. It's maybe not quite as necessary. If you were only getting down to the 30s, you'd only have to run it a couple times a day and it'd probably be an overkill. I do have a link in the description for the castle pellet stove that I have that we absolutely love. If you're interested in checking that out. Anyways, please like and subscribe, it helps the channel out, all that kind of nonsense. And we'll talk to you Just later. Just another quick update. It is about 4.35 AM. You can see it's nine degrees outside. In here, we're currently at 66.8. The pipe area is 52 degrees. I got my little fans down there, pumping the air, circulating it through where the pipes are. And my storage tanks are 41, 43. And under the RV is 36 degrees. So just that cheap little reflectix going around the RV for about $200. And that's with no heaters underneath there, and that's with it nine degrees outside. So.